Hey, Vic. How you doing? Good, thanks. Got a couple for you. Uh, first one is, what do you uh, what do you and your staff hope to get done and accomplish this weekend with the young guys? Well, teach them a lot of stuff mentally. That's uh, just job one. And, um, you know, we just had a walkthrough out there, and I was impressed with what the guys were able to learn in the meetings that we had with them last night and this morning, and it was they did a good job. Now, obviously, at that tempo, it's a little bit different than real life, but I think they've done a good job of learning up to this point, and that's what we need to continue. And then secondly, off topic from rookie camp, uh, your right tackle situation, how big of a blow was losing Juwan, and, you know, how – what do you think your situation right now with that and two guys? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, obviously saddened and disappointed with what happened with Juwan. Um, you know, that put our numbers at a, at, at a low amount at the tackle position. And you know, I think I believe we only had three on the roster at that time. So after he was injured, so we definitely had to go get some guys. And uh, we signed Bobby Massey and Fleming guys that have played in the league. So it's going to set up good competition for that position. Thanks, one, Nick Kozmater. Hey, Vic, thanks for the time. I wanted to ask you about Pat Sertan. You said after the draft that he's a guy that you think uh, could play inside if, if you guys needed him to. But will the plan this offseason be to kind of work him, you know, everywhere, whether it's at nickel, on the outside? How do you guys plan on approaching him and, and how you're going to slot him in? Both, just like you said. Um, because uh, as you guys know, you've heard me say many times, you know, there's five and six DBs on the field a lot in the NFL anymore. And we're no different than many of the other teams. So, I mean, if he's capable of having some position flexibility, it helps us get our so-called best players on the field at the same time. So, we're, you know, we need corners that can play inside. And he's had some experience doing that in college. I think he's probably capable of it. We'll never know for sure until we put him in there, but he's definitely a guy that we want to teach the inside positions at some point quickly. Thanks, one, Jeff. Hey, Vic, I'm just curious. There was a move a few years ago. Uh, Jeff Hireman was one of the injuries here, but there was a move for a while not to put the rookies on the field during a rookie mini camp. Uh, I was just kind of wondering your thought process about having them be ready for any on-field work and what, what kind of tempo are you going to have with these guys? Yeah, you know, obviously we had a walk-through tempo here that we just finished. Uh, this afternoon we're going to go out and um, have some individual position drill work. We're going to do some routes on air, both sides of the ball. And then we're going we're gonna to have a skelly, possibly two, with them. There'll be no teamwork. We don't have enough uh, – defensive linemen to have teamwork. And then kind of how many guys do you expect next week when you start your, your full program? I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I really don't know. Um, we put a lot of thought into the schedule that um, we've uh, come up with. Um, it came through many uh, additions. And um, I like the schedule we have. I think we've... Uh, Heard everybody's side of the story, players, coaches, management. And uh, I really don't know how many will be here. Hopefully, we'll have a good number. But, uh, you know, it's a voluntary camp. And uh, whoever decides to come, we'll be, we'll, we'll be happy about. Thanks, I'm sorry. Nick, it's a good-looking new hat you got there, the new Broncos gear. The you want one? <laughs> No, I'm good. I just like that. Hey, okay. this first time we've talked to you since the schedule came out. I know you talked to the website. Did you, when you look at that schedule, how imperative is a fast start? Have you looked at how things might change given for whatever reason you guys had had difficulty the last few years in September? I mean, a fast start's always important, um, regardless of what the, tr the uh, troubles we've had the last two years. And we hope to get off to a much better start this season. And really that's all I look at when the schedule comes out is our first two, three, four opponents um, because you like to do some planning for them at this time of the year, you know, and you always want to see if they're staffs that stayed intact or it's a new coaching staff, which now makes it a little harder preparation. 
for those, if, especially if it's a, your first game or your second game. You know, the Giants um, staff stayed intact. And, you know, so what we're watching from them in 2020 should present a lot of carryover to 21. You know, obviously the Jaguars are second. That's a totally new staff. So a little bit of guesswork there as to what they're going to look like schematically in all three phases. You know, so that's kind of basically really all I look at when the schedule comes out. Who's our early opponents? Thanks for Marty Stapleton. Hey Dick, good, good afternoon. I got a couple for you. Um, given that this was an, a weird lead up to uh, the draft, you know, you guys didn't get a chance to talk to guys in person or the combine wasn't around. Um, does that make this uh, weekend a little bit more intriguing for some? You've seen these guys up close on the football field. Um, um, I, a little bit in that, yeah, you do get to meet them, shake their hand, talk to them face to face, not on Zoom. So in that regard, yes, but um, really otherwise it was pretty, pretty seamless, the draft process. The guys that it was the hardest on was the scouts because in the fall they're used to going to games they like to watch games. They like to pe watch the players all throughout the game. And that was taken away from them for a good bit. They like to watch them practice. But from my standpoint and the coaching staff standpoint, it, uh, it didn't really change it a whole lot. And secondly, I know you've talked about um, Teddy and, and Drew will kind of split things up um, as they get to this quarterback competition. But uh, Drew being the holdover, is he kind of the incumbent? Does he, does he get first snaps or does Teddy being the newcomer step in and get the first snaps or does that even uh, make a difference at this point? That'll be day by day. You know, it's totally 50, 50. Um, maybe I'll flip a coin to see who takes the absolute first snap of the off season and training camp. But by the end of the day, meaning the end of, training camp before those guys make the decision for us with their play. Um, it's going to be a 50, 50 opposite, you know, proposition. Some days, some guy might get more than the other, then it will even out the next day or two days later. It's not going to be 50, 50, probably every day, but over the course of this off season and training camp, it will be. Thanks on air Delala. Yeah. Hey, big couple questions about the linebackers you drafted. Uh, first on Baron Browning, does anything, can you learn anything from when you guys had Justin Hollins and kind of moving him a couple times that could help you here? Um, not with, not just with Justin. I mean, it's happened with a lot of guys over the years had experience with it. And each, each individual is different as to how quick they pick up two positions, how, what position is their best, um, which one are they most comfortable at? Which one do you need them at the most? Um, so it's always different gymnastics every time you, you know, undertake a linebacker that has some versatility. We're going to leave him at inside linebacker here for a good bit, see how he does, and then go from there. And then secondly, with Jonathan Cooper, does him? Did you guys adding him help you keep uh, Browning at inside? And, and what is Cooper's situation uh, medically right now? Uh, medically, he's, you know, he's doing good. He had a uh, procedure the other day, one that we were aware of, and um, he's doing good. And it, they're confident that they um, have rectified everything and he should be good to go. Um, what was the first part of that question? Just if, if uh, adding him at outside backer kind of helps you keep Browning at inside or if those are unrelated? They're unrelated. Go ahead, George. Hey, Vic, hope you're doing well. I uh, have a couple for you. Uh, first off, um, what did you like about Andre Mintz from Vanderbilt? You guys signed him undrafted. Uh, he had a pretty impressive college career and I think a pretty good pro day. What did you like about him? Well, everything you just said. He played, he played good in college. He had the misfortune of going undrafted. We liked his workout day, just like you had alluded to. And uh, we were happy to get him as a free agent. You know, the, the – being a free agent isn't a terrible thing. A lot of those guys make it. And, um, you know, back in the day when I first started in the NFL, there was 12 rounds in the draft. And um, a lot of those 8th, ninth, 10th, and 11th, 12th round picks, they would make it. 
and really the our draft now because there's 32 teams and there's compensatory picks it's about equivalent to a 10 round draft or so comparing it to the old days and this guy's got talent he's got ability and we're happy to have him give him an opportunity Secondly, you've been through quite a few rookie mini camps and, and off season and OTAs. What's maybe the biggest learning curve that you experience from rookies that, that maybe they struggle with the most or, or have the hardest time adapting to? Is, and is that either on the field or off the field that you see it typically? Both. Um, some guys have an easy time with adjusting to being on their own. You know, they're on their own when they go to the college, but they do get uh, – coddled and let around a little bit. I don't mean that to that, for that to sound negative. But now when they leave the building here, you know, we give them as much guidance as we can with our player programs. You know, they're on their own and uh, they don't have school anymore. So they got to learn how to handle their free time constructively. And then on the field, it's a, it's a different game. You know, it's like I told the uh, these guys last night, you know, over a uh, three to five year period, which is what a college uh, stay goes for, you know, there's over 800, 900 colleges playing football and they all have over a hundred and some guys on the roster. And now you're down to 32 teams that pick 53 on the roster and it's over a 10 to 15 year period. There's guys in their thirties playing in this league, late twenties. And, you know, it's a man's league at the highest level of competition. And because of that, and these guys have to be ready for that. Hey, guys, we got time for a few more. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Vic, curious of your initial thoughts on Javante Williams. How do you think his skill set translates to the league? And, and what do you foresee his role in the offense being alongside Melvin? Well, we like his skill set. We think he's a good all-around back. He can run obviously run the ball inside. He's got good contact balance. He's uh, capable in pass protection, which is a really important thing to have in your backfield. And he's capable of running around and catching the ball out of the backfield. So we're very, very happy to have him. And um, we think he's got a chance to be a really good player for us. And uh, you never have enough backs. And uh, backs are the easiest guy, the easiest position on offense to get the ball to. You just have to hand it to him or throw a short pass and they make it happen. So um, we're happy to have them and we're uh, anxious to see them. Go ahead, Brian. Vic, kind of back to what Leggy asked about Hireman's injury. How do you keep these guys from going too hard or trying to impress you or whatever it is because it's an undrafted guy or a, a tryout type player? Yeah, I just keep reminding them of it. We've talked to them about it already. We'll constantly talk to them. And the way practice is set up, because we have so few numbers, we think we have 27 guys out here that uh, we're going to do very little. Like to this afternoon's practice where it's offense and defense might just be 15 or 16 Skelly plays, you know, seven on seven. There'll be no team. So the way practice is set up takes care of that to some degree. But these guys need practice. You know, we just had a uh, about five jets from the military, I assume, fly over our field here towards the end of our walkthrough. And they came out all stacked up real close together. They split out. And then impressively, they turned around and came back past the practice field all in single file now. And my first thought when I saw all that was, man, that had to take a lot of practice. And that practice developed a lot of trust between those five pilots, you know, because they were flying close together for a while. So, and that's what we need to do. We need to have a lot of practice so these guys can trust each other. The guy next to him, the guy next to him, all through the 11 positions on the team. So we need practice, just like those pilots needed it. And uh, there's a fine line there. You know, we could avoid 100% of injuries if we don't practice ever. But I guarantee you, show up for the game and there'd be a million injuries in the game then. So we need the practice and we're going to be smart with it and move forward. Hey guys, we'll end with Ryan. We want to try to get some of these players in before practice. Go ahead. Hey Vic, I understand you were in Omaha earlier this week uh, for no offense, mom's funeral. Who else from the team went with you and, and, and how important was it to be there for him? Uh, I was myself, George, 
um, his coach, Wade Harmon, uh, Vaughn went, uh, Drew went, and uh, Ray Jackson went. And it was, you know, it was important. Um, it was a very um, sad situation, very um, traumatic for Noah and his family at that time. You know, she was, I believe, 52, 53 years old. And, uh, you know, it happened kind of suddenly. So, you know, I just think it was, it was good for us to get some guys together and go show, show them some support. And he'll have our support when he comes back. Oh.